Man, uh, this is great. We are now like fully in color on video. So uh, we are experimenting with a video podcast this time. So going multimodal. That's right. So if you're listening, you could be watching us on YouTube. And also, if you're listening, are we going uh, full YouTube video or shorts? Uh, maybe both. I don't know. Uh, so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll kind of figure see. that out. Yeah, uh, we're, we're doing a lot of experiments here with the podcast. So we just got uh, this really cool software called Opus. Uh, mm. Opus. So not like the Anthropic Opus, but a different Opus. So this is Opus Pro, which it'll take a full length video and then it will chop it up into different uh, clips that it thinks is viral. And then uh, our goal is to maybe try to post those uh all over your the interweb so like uh we made an account uh at youtube we made an account on uh tiktok uh and then well i I tried to make an account on um uh instagram reels but it seems like we're having some issues so like immediately got banned so i'm gonna try to like figure that out interesting yeah anyways uh don't worry uh we will be there uh wherever wherever you are we're going to try to make it so that like you will be able to find us. Yeah, I don't know what Mark has been doing on his Instagram account, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> and, and the service is actually amazing. It uh, not only generates clips, it transcribes the audio and uh, creates captions with like highlighting, um, like those uh, trendy short videos that you see that uh, pull snippets from uh, popular YouTubers like Joe Rogan or whoever. Um, and create little sound bites. Um, and the way it selects these clips is actually really cool too. It uh, picks them based on a couple different criteria uh, to maximize virality um, and gives you scores uh, for maybe like 10, 15 different clips that it generates uh, from an hour long video. So um, really amazing for creators. Uh, it's very little effort. It's like one click um, generates all of these videos that have the potential to go viral. So really exciting yeah it's super cool so we have this sort of like master plan so like both of us are working full-time like you know we don't necessarily have a lot of uh time to be able to post daily clips yeah we both just beat rush hour traffic to get here to try to record a video for you guys we have literally 30 minutes before we have to run to the next thing so like we don't have a lot of time uh so like we really try to like optimize as much as possible but this opus pro or opus clips pro whatever it's called it has the ability to automatically post every day. So what we're... Or at the very least generate viral clips. That's right. Uh, and I think automatically post them too. Okay. So at least I think it does. So like the idea would be is like we could maybe do, you know, a 30 minute hour long podcast with lots of little sound bites in it and then uh, maybe post every day of the week. So then you guys will be able to see us every single day. Um, whereas like we may not actually be like actually recording every day. Not that we really want to spam people with a bunch of, uh, content that's not relevant, but I think, uh, these short, um, digestible bites are easier to, uh, listen to, um, as opposed to a long half an hour, hour long, uh, audio podcast. That's right. Cause if you don't want to hear us like ramble for 30 minutes, which I mean, like, you know, thank you for, for listening, but uh, we try to keep this interesting, but if all you, uh, have is. 30 seconds we want to meet you where you are so anyways shashank what's in the news this week it's been kind of a slow week i think it uh it has been a little bit of a slow week um i think we we've been getting a lot of uh competition from other companies releasing smaller models and bigger models um and models of like all scale and sizes so we talked about llama 3 which uh was you know State of the art uh, a week ago. Now we have a new state of the art. Uh, Microsoft released their Phi three models, which are also open source. Um, I'm not sure about the license, but um, yeah. So, anyways, we we talked about the the Llama three last week. Yeah. So, you know, for full context, listen to there. Uh, really brief, in case like you're joining us new. Uh, Llama three is Facebook's new or Meta's new state of the art model. They have a bunch of different sizes. They're working on a super big one. I think it's like a 400 billion parameter one. And then they're still training it. Yeah. And then they've released a 70 billion parameter. Uh, and then they released a $8 billion, a, not $8 billion, but I'm, they might have spent so whatever. Uh, they released an $8 billion parameter model. Uh, and then uh, not to be left out, Microsoft released by three. 
Yeah, so um, for context, I think uh, the llama one was interesting because um, what they tried differently, among other things, I'm sure, is they just trained it for much longer than what people usually do. So uh, the performance curve kind of like uh, diminishes uh, over time uh, or rather with um, the amount of training data. But they found that it doesn't stop getting better. It just like gets better less over time. But they're like, you know, um, for a model that's going to be used um, a lot, that kind of makes sense. And uh, for them, they're shit. They, they serve uh half the world's population like three billion users or something across all of their apps whatsapp instagram facebook messenger etc and they started rolling it out um to all of those apps as far as i know um i was looking at uh um whatsapp and i you, you can ask it to um, imagine slash imagine um an image and it generates image it responds with text and i'm assuming it's powered by their latest and greatest llama 3 model yeah yeah it, it's um I, I would assume i would, i mean like why wouldn't they use it mm-hmm. and uh it, it's crazy facebook scale i mean like insane yeah, yeah anybody who's like on the internet or like even has a computer probably yeah. has some sort of facebook account um and speaking of people uh organizations that scale microsoft another one um I, I don't understand uh, their position in this open source world, um, but they're trying uh, with 5.3 and they released a much smaller model, 3 billion parameter model uh, compared to all the other models, uh, which are like 7 or 8 billion from um, Meta, Llama 3, um, the uh, Databricks, uh, the snowflakes um and a bunch of other competitors but this one's a tiny three billion parameter model and it's supposedly better than uh the llama 3 8 billion so it's like they're they're doing a bunch of um experiments with the quality of the training data um the amount of time that they train these models for um and we're getting all sorts of trade-offs so this one specifically um, it's very tiny, very quick, very efficient, um, and very good at certain kinds of uh, reasoning. But what it's not good at is all this general world knowledge that you get when you just shove a bunch of data into these large models. Yeah, you know, so I, I was uh, to go on a bit of a tangent uh, from that, where you say it's not necessarily as good. So I, I was listening to a, uh, a podcast uh, it was like yesterday or the other day, where they were interviewing some uh, researchers from, uh, I think it was Anthropic. Um, it was uh, the Dwar- Dwarkesh Patel. Mm. Yeah. So uh, basically they, they said that... Another fantastic podcast. Great podcast. Uh, so yeah, really, really good. Uh, they just interviewed Mark Zuckerberg. Um, like a couple weeks ago. Anyways. Um, amazing, insightful podcast. So they kind of uh, said this sort of interesting uh, thing, at least I thought it was relatively interesting. And they said that in a certain sense the bigger the model is um like the more parameters it has uh the more kind of data that it will be able to have about the world because really if you think about it what these models are trying to do is they are taking all of the world's kind of written knowledge and trying to compress them down into this like little tiny thing so like uh, the three billion parameter model, i don't know how big it is a gigabyte or two um so like super tiny so like you think about it, like a gigabyte or two, that's like the size of like a movie, right? So it's like you either have like, you know, like a Game of Thrones movie or whatever, it's maybe even more than you buy. And then like something around the same size, like on your computer would have like the entire world's knowledge. So that's not feasible though. Uh, right, exactly. So what, what they mentioned is uh, if you have a, a model that has like a lot of parameters, um, you may have something like, okay, like I'm going to learn like all the different types of birds. So it's like, if you're going to let's say like, okay, like, uh, I don't know, but like a bald eagle or like a raven or sparrow, uh, whatever. Right. Um, but then, uh, uh, the smaller models, they might not know all the types and all the details about the type, but they might just know like, you know, bird and like the meaning of bird, but they might not like be able to know all the nuances of different types. So like in a certain sense, um, like we really need 
like the bigger and bigger models to be able to actually like know more information about the world because really like these llms are a compression of the world's knowledge mm -hmm. yeah they're they're good at uh compressing all this information but not very well so it's not like a zip file that compresses um losslessly it's a very lossy compression um and it tries to extract uh higher level, deeper underlying patterns out of this surface level information. So that's like a weird way to compress information uh, or compress the, uh, how, how do I say it? Compress uh, knowledge that's contained in text. Yeah. But in a certain sense, that's kind of what we do, right? The LLMs sure. are compressing data in a similar way to the human brain, right? Because if you think about it, like, we don't remember everything uh, that we've ever learned. We Like, people don't have photographic memory, except in maybe, like, uh, really um, rare circumstances. And, like, uh, our brain is just, like, constantly filtering everything all the time. Like, if we remember everything, um, we would just go insane, Oof. right? Um, like, it, like, forgetting things is a benefit, but... Uh, I, I think that in a certain sense, like these LLMs, when they're compressed uh, and they're smaller, they're able to, uh, in a certain sense, simulate the human brain uh, because like the compression is almost like forgetting. Um, uh, so maybe uh, another thing that I was thinking of uh, that would be required to simulate the human brain is to um, focus on specializing for different tasks. Uh, so the snowflake model, yeah. um, they took this mixture of experts, uh, pattern and just went wild with it. Yeah. They... So for reference, snowflake, uh, is a company that just created this new open source model. It's, it's, uh, got a lot of parameters. It's very, very big. Um, and, uh, a lot of people say, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of mixtures in their experts. Uh, but the model is actually not that big. Uh, but it's like, they have a lot of experts. Yeah. In yeah. the so in the mixture of extra small. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So um, previously, I think the popular mixture of experts had like eight or so, less than ten uh, experts that a uh, organizer, uh, architect, or a model router would then decide which one of these tiny experts would be best suited to complete this prompt. So what Snowflake did was to take um, that pattern and build uh, a mixture of experts model with 128 uh, experts. And that's like crazy amount. Um, what, what, uh, what some people mentioned is that then you run into trade-offs where you have to focus on building a really good router that decides which expert would be best suited to complete this um, section of the prompt. So... I think um, they published uh, a paper and um, described their findings, but we're we're having a lot of different companies experiment with a lot of different approaches. Um, and Snowflakes was the best model at the time, but things changed so quickly. Um, they were surpassed by Llama 3 uh, last week, which was then surpassed by uh, Microsoft's Phi 2. Um, <laughs> And we have Apple too that released another oh, Apple uh, released one? Apple released another open source model. I don't think it is uh, the best in uh, any of these verticals. Um, but what's interesting about theirs is that um, they there's uh, Apple. Theirs is Apple. Okay. Uh, there, actually, theirs is the least Apple like Apple product that I've ever seen. Oh, really? It is the most open source model out there with extremely permissive licenses that allows anyone anywhere uh, of any scale to use it. Uh, whereas uh, Meta's Llama 3, uh, most people can use it, but uh, if you're an organization beyond a certain size, you're not allowed to use it unless you talk to them and arrange some kind of a deal. Uh, Apple doesn't care. They're like, anyone uh, who wants to use it, you're free to do so. Maybe they're uh, taking the playbook out of Mark Zuckerberg uh, or play from Mark Zuckerberg where they're yeah, maybe yeah. trying to become the industry standard for things. I have no idea. Yeah. They're a bit late to the game. So, you know, they're they're trying something. Well, I mean, I feel like Apple's always late to the game for everything, but they try to do it right. 
<laughs> but I don't know, because, like, LLs are so experimental that, like, it's hard to say, like, to do it right. So yeah. maybe they just need to, you know, uh, kind of get it out to the world and have people start banging on it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Anyways, um, so uh, one thing uh, that leads to experimentation, uh, Rabbit R1, the Oof. reviews, yeah. those are coming out. Yeah. So uh, for those who don't know, uh, we've talked a little bit about it before. The Rabbit R1 is a uh, a device it kind of is about like this half the size of a phone. Uh, mm-hmm. It's about like, if you look at my hands, about like yay big, I'd mm-hmm. say. Like the, the, it's a little bigger than a deck of cards, mm-hmm. it's square. Uh, it's orange. Um, and uh, what it does is it is uh, an, uh, a device that all it has is an LLM. Um, Jacques, you even ordered one, right? Yeah, I did. Um, so I was listening to their CEO on... Um, a podcast with Jason Calacanis, and I think it was This Week in Startups or uh, one of his uh, podcasts. And um, I just I just really liked the narrative that their founder had. He had worked on a previous generation of uh, voice smart assistants, um, similar to Alexa and Google Assistant. And he had worked with uh, Teenage Engineering, which is a hardware company that builds really iconic, beautiful um uh, music audio engineering equipment um and they they built this device or they showcased it um as like a kickstarter or something and uh, they just went viral because uh, the design was so iconic um very simple elegant um little rectangular very very orange cube with a little uh, sliding wheel and for me what the killer feature was uh it they they were focusing on a large action model. So um, this was uh, maybe two, three months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. A couple months ago when agents were the hot new thing. So people were like, okay, LMs are awesome. How do we push this technology further? And everyone was like, okay, agents, let's build um, these systems that get multiple flavors of these LLMs to work with each other to accomplish a harder um task so rabbit r1 is supposed to be a device that can um, learn your actions um, in your workflows and repeat them so say you're um, going on reddit maybe trying to scour the latest news in a specific domain let's say medicine or something um, and trying to uh, make a list of the best breakthroughs um, you do that once or twice, train this little device, um, how you do this workflow, and then it just magically learns. So it just like watches you do a thing. Exactly. So like if I'm scrolling through Facebook and I just keep doom scrolling, just keep scrolling down, it'll just uh, be like, oh, I've learned uh, that you just keep scrolling. Sure, and sure. It'll, it'll just keep scrolling sure. just as you read at, at the same speed. So as opposed to just like, you know, you having to touch the screen, it could do it for you. Uh, I suppose it could do that, but uh, the the pitch was supposed to be a little more uh, targeted towards product productive use cases. Um, <laughs> I mean, specifically things where you do a lot of repetitive action um, that is that is a little tedious um, and uh, extract some value out of that. So, for example, uh, getting the ETA for your DoorDash order, some food that you ordered, you're like, keep checking. Okay, how much longer is it going to take? How much longer? Um, instead of having you do that manually, you just ask this uh, device, okay, how much longer is it going to take? Um, show it how to do that. Um, open up the DoorDash app, scroll to your order, look at the ETA, and then you have the response. So you do that a couple of times, you teach it how to do that, um, and then it's learned this action, um, and they're trying to build a large action model that not only learns your specific actions that you want to teach it, but then they want to build an app store for all these actions that uh, people want to teach it and then publish onto a store that you can then share with other people. Um, And the best part about this, it was a $200 device. um, And that $200 gives you not only this device, but also a free subscription to Perplexity for a year, which is also $200. And I was like, oh, wow. So it's basically free. This is is a great deal. Uh, And Perplexity is an awesome website, which um, uh, not only is a good alternative to popular search engines, um, 
although search engines today are fantastic. Uh, please, please use more search engines. <laughs> but uh, for, for <laughs> a full disclaimer, I work at Google, so it, uh, it it will definitely help me in the long run if you keep using search engines. But uh, there are really cool alternatives to um, the traditional search engines coming out. And Perplexity not only helps you um, search, but they have this like co-pilot feature that takes a search query and does like a couple different steps of intermediate research and then uh, comes up with the answer. And the cool part about it is it allows you to access all the state-of-the-art models um, from their platform. So if you want to use um, Anthropic's Cloud Opus 3 or Google's Gemini Pro or uh, Meta's Llama 3 or whatever, uh, you can access all that through this one Wait, subscription. You have to pay extra for that? Uh, one subscription. It, it, wait, just like $200? Yeah. Uh, or uh, oh, twenty dollars a month or something. Yeah, uh, whatever is the standard rate. Uh, same, similar ballpark. Uh, wow, that yeah. seems like a really good deal. It's a great deal. Yeah, uh, but there's I don't think they're the only ones doing that. There's a couple aggregators that allow you to pick and choose which model that you want. And, and this is not sponsored by anybody. Not at all. Uh, we're not making any money off of this. In fact, we're losing. Money <laughs> this. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's but, okay. Yeah. So, uh, getting back to the Rabbit R one, uh, this was. Uh, Maybe a couple, a week or two after the humane review, which was blasted by all the tech reviewers. So the uh, humane is like a like a pen yeah. that like I don't know what, is, what does it do. It like it has like a little camera. It could watch you. Uh, it has like a little laser that can go on your hand. Yeah, just like a wearable LLM. Both of these are separate hardware devices um, that have some kind of LLM built into it. The Humane is primarily a voice assistant. Um, I, I I think it's very similar to like the Alexa or Google Assistant. Um, it answers back with voice. Uh, well, uh, you know, I can't say the G word here. We, I, have a, I work on Google hardware products and I have a lot of uh, G devices that get triggered as soon as I say that word. Um, but yeah, so the Humane AI pin uh, is primarily a traditional AI assistant uh, with a small projector that uh, displays something on your palm um, if you wanted to. And the Rabbit R1 doesn't have a projector. It has a tiny little screen um, that carries out actions and also answers regular queries. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a pretty cool device. Like, in theory, I, in theory. Yeah, and I know that like, you know, a lot of the reviewers now said that, like, it's not, like, quite there. But they said it's awful. This is, uh, the Humane AI pin uh, was mentioned as the worst product that they've ever reviewed. And the Rabbit R one was not that far behind. See, but, like, here's the thing. I feel like if the Rabbit R one was released, let's say, even two years ago, people would be like, this thing is amazing they'd be uh, like are, are you talking about just the hardware the the lm <laughs> the action model or everything uh i would say like as a package okay right but like specifically like the llm okay. like with the hardware like if 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 let's say here's 2024 let's say in 2022 right um i came out with this little box yeah. this magical box could answer all your questions People be like, this is amazing. Uh, like, absolutely amazing. Like, I can talk to it. It talks back. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of these uh, things like, you know, Siri and whatever has been around forever, yeah. right? Um, all the, the different devices. Um, but, uh, you know, like, I, I can ask Siri, like, you know, what's the weather? I, I can ask, uh, you know, uh, maybe to set like an alarm, like a timer, right? But like, um it's it's not like quite as good as like conversational uh ux i would say right um and, and i think like the rabbit r1 uh since it's leveraging these large language models it, it's able to do that now uh like now like i think we live in amazing times to say that all the tech reviews are saying oh this is terrible no this is amazing it, it's it's a thing that goes and, and hits the internet uh, and comes back and, and is able to answer your question. Like you could go, like take a picture of a plant. Uh, the, it could tell you what the plant is. Um, you can go and uh, talk to it, ask it like all the same things you would ask like ChatGPT. 
um, the goalposts have moved. Um, and like, I, I don't know, like, it's like a, you know, like old Louis C.K. bit where you go in and say like, uh, it's like, oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, I think it was like where he talks about like you're in an airplane or like, it's like, oh, like, uh, my phone is slow. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's hitting the satellite, <laughs> like it was bouncing around. Yeah. Uh, why can't I scroll TikTok on my airplane? Yeah, it's like, it's like, give it a minute. Um, I don't know. So yeah, to, to, to be fair, um, the tech reviewers were taking into account everything that's going on. And they did mention that they have mad respect for these companies um, for attempting something so bold, so unique in a market that is uh, like so uniform. Every single cell phone is the same form factor. It's a rectangular brick that is looking more and more indistinguishable from every other manufacturer out there. And we have these two companies that are pushing the envelope for hardware, for uh, consumer uh, devices, and it's it's really cool. But um, it's not a finished product today. Uh, the promise is really cool, and that's one of the reasons why I got this. Uh, and the price tag is very affordable without a subscription. So the Rabbit R1 doesn't have a subscription, which also makes it easier to digest. Whereas the Humane AI pin not only is like a six, $700 device, but also has a monthly $20 subscription or something, which is like, which is, which is hard to swallow. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to feel like thinking about like where in that. I mean, yeah. like, how do you have a phone? Like, I can just talk to it. Like, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, full disclosure, I also have friends who work at Humane, so I'm rooting for them. I hope something good comes out of it because it's, it's not often you see, uh, new revolutionary hardware companies come about and like I hope they do something cool um, they do have some execs from Apple who built an amazing hardware product so all the reviewers did mention that even though the end-to-end -end experience isn't that great like there's a lot of lag they can fix that but like you can fix it in software you can yeah. uh, a lot of the things a lot of the complaints that the reviewers had latency was a big one they can improve that over time um but the build quality, oh my god, this is a beautiful device. Um, but, I mean, we've heard. I yeah. Mean, uh, like, uh, you mean, uh, I, I trust these reviewers. Yeah. They've been, they've been consistently um, honest and forthright with all the reviews that they've done, pointing out the good and the bad. Um, so it's it seems like they've given an unbiased review. But what, re what really convinced me about the Rabbit R1 was the App Store or Action Model. And that's like something I can get behind, something I'm looking forward to. Um, if I can train this device to learn how to do things uh, that I'm doing day to day and offload that capability onto this device, that would be fantastic. That's super exciting. That's amazing. To be able to offload uh, different actions. Like, I mean, think about the all the repetitive tasks that you do every single day. Yep. Uh, and having an easy way to train this device. Just show it how you do something, and then it magically learns. As opposed to going into IFTTT or Zapier and manually dragging uh, little uh, uh, plugins and endpoints and hooking those up and making sure those are stable uh, across multiple updates of these different apps. That is very tedious and very brittle too. Um, and this is something that not only can uh, learn easily, but can probably also withstand major updates to these softwares and these applications that it's running these actions on. So that if this app, Uber, DoorDash, whatever, is changing their UI, updating the layout, it can adapt to these little minor changes. Yeah, I mean, I, I just like kind of spitball some of the use cases I could think of here. Like, imagine you didn't have a car and you maybe commuted to the office. Like, every day you commute at the same time. It's just like, uh, it can learn that and then, you know, order Uber at the same time every day. Yeah. Right. Um, or maybe like the best bus route. Uh, yeah. It, it could order you the Uber every day mm -hmm. only when you're at your house. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could maybe test your location. Uh, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, see, so yeah, I don't know what else, like, uh, order you lunch every day. Uh, that, that's repetitive. Maybe, uh, if you order your groceries online. Order the same things. We sell help, the food. Help us automate the podcast publishing process. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We, we uh, use AI heavily 
in this podcast. Not enough. And we want to use more. always use more. <laughs> yes, yes. Because honestly, I think like us using the AI, like it gives us a use case for us to play around with it. Because, you know, it's one thing to just look at the benchmarks, mm-hmm. but it's another thing to actually use it and like, you know, kind of sink your teeth into it. You really get it. Oh, I like that. And we're trying to offload all the tedious parts that, uh, you know, anyone can do. It's not something that's creative. Um, uploading these files, formatting it, um, leveling the audio and things like that. Um, Maybe we can even see if we can, like, uh, make the uh, video quality better. Because, like, don't uh, people do, like, color correction and stuff, yeah, too? Like, maybe we could find, like, AI color correction. If that's a thing. I don't know. That's that's for the next episode. Yeah, m- maybe. Yeah. It, probably not this one. But maybe, maybe in the future. Because uh, we have to run soon. Time for the meetup. Yes. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you for listening. And please, if you enjoyed this podcast... Um, or there, if you don't leave some feedback too. Yeah, either one. It like drives engagement, but uh, there are a couple things you can do. One, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe wherever you're listening. YouTube, uh, automatically download it. Let's let's bump those numbers up. And then if you already did that, please leave a review. Uh, you know you can review up to five stars. Uh, on, you know most things, right? Uh, and then uh, so review, and then subscribe and then if you've already done that please share this with a friend uh anybody who you think uh, might find value from this uh please you know tell them about us because we're not making any money off this uh we're just trying to you know uh give something out to the world so again thank you for listening uh and we'll see you next week until next time